Hey, what's up? Leron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. It's been a while since we did a more talking conversational video face to face. So today I want to talk to you about master studies and is copying other people you consider to be masters at your craft. Is it cheating? Is it something that's okay to do? Are you allowed to do it? If you've been following me for a while, many of you probably know my answer to these questions. But let's tackle it step by step. So I have a couple of pointers for myself to make sure I don't forget anything before we get to it. If you enjoy my videos, I would really appreciate if you like this one, uh, because that really helps me reach new people. Thank you so much. So master studies, what are they? What's their importance? And is it okay? Or is it cheating <laughs> to do them? So master studies, copying works by people whom you consider or are considered generally good in that in your field of practice is a very common thing to do. It's been done for a long, long time. People have always learned from other masters. Now, when you do a master's study, it can have varying goals. But what I think for me personally, the goal is to get into the mind of a different person and realize why they did things the way they did it. And by doing things the way they did it, you learn a lot of things and it has a lot of benefits which we're going to get into in just a moment. But I do want to clarify, master studies have been a very common practice in multiple fields. So not just watercolor, if you're coming from that world, if you look at oil paintings, if you look at illustrations, comic book and comic art, that's it's something that people have been doing in so many different fields. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, but we're going to get to that in just a moment. Now, uh, what are the benefits of doing master studies and why they're so important? So I would say, and this is something you may have not th thought about, uh, and I actually want to start with this, okay? Many times you don't know what you don't know. So for example, you want to start a painting, but you're so inexperienced, not only in the medium and in the techniques, but you're so inexperienced in knowing what you enjoy creating and in and, and understanding yourself and knowing what type of art makes you happy. So master studies are a good way to kind of circumvent that. When you don't know what you want to paint, when you don't know what you want to create, you can just create based on someone else's work. And the beautiful thing about it is that you know what you love when you look at other people's paintings. You know that you love this particular artist or that particular creator. So you know that you're doing something that you like. Not necessarily it's something you want to create in that same way, but you know at the very least that you like that person's art. And so creating that is going to be something positive. Now, think about it this way. If this is your level and you have someone who's up here, okay, because it's just pure skill, someone who's been doing it a couple of decades more than you do. So doing a master study, doing thing, a thing that a work that's this level, kind of makes you go beyond your current level, forces you to do that. Because if you're just painting from uh, different references, photo references, or maybe you're outside painting, you're kind of at that level and you're making gradual small steps, which is great. That's the major way of doing things. But when you force yourself to work on a piece of art that's that level, it kind of forces you to pull yourself upwards, if you will, and try something that's beyond your level and beyond your comfort zone. Okay, that's, to me, that's the major benefit. It's kind of like when you're exercising and you increase your weight, the weight that you lift or the weight that you, you know, pre press or whatever, it forces you to go beyond your current level. And sometimes that's the really the only way to advance. Okay, so that's, I think the main benefit, and it's something that I don't hear talked about that often. Now, let's set that aside and talk about the more common benefits. You learn um, about composition, you learn about the different techniques that people use, because if you're always in your comfort zone, always painting what you're familiar with, the work process itself is something you're also very familiar with. Okay, so when you paint like someone else, you're forced to take upon yourself to understand their work process, the way they do things. And that's a really key element because you may find that you really love something about their way of doing things, their work process, and you want to incorporate, incorporate it into your work. Now, one more huge benefit that is also often overlooked is learning just how much effort, focus and patience is required. So I'm going to give you a very practical example. When you paint, you don't know 
well, it's, it's kind of a tricky subject, but try and bear with me. You don't know if the amount of effort you put into your work is enough. You may be just winging it, kind of going at it, enjoying yourself, which is fine, which is great. If, however, you strive for a high level, at some point you have to kind of focus up and, and put a lot of effort and focus. It's something I talked about in a recent podcast episode as well. Put a lot of effort and focus into what you're doing. And if you look at, I'm gonna give you two good examples. First, Qian Chung Wei, whom I reviewed in the Painting Masters series. If you look at how he paints the first wash of a watercolor painting, it may make you feel really lazy because, and same for me, because what I do is I often just go for it. I go for an initial wash, I paint it just top to bottom or I do wet and wet or something like this. The way he approaches it, he really takes his time. He goes at it very slowly and gets the lines in very carefully and makes sure to leave highlights in multiple interesting places, and make the most out of wet and wets. So his initial wash may take maybe triple the time it takes me to get my initial wash done. Now, it's okay if you wanna do things the way you do them, but if you never tried that alternative, you won't know what you're missing. So I will encourage you to try it out at least a couple of times and see, huh, maybe I really disrespect, so to speak, my initial washes, which is why I get a very bland result, which is why they're just flat you know, colors. Maybe I wanna make more of them. And how would you know it unless you try and create like someone else? And in this day and age, we also have the video processes, which is huge. Not only you have the access to tons of paintings by very talented artists, um, you also have access to exactly how they did things. So when you look at a painting by Chen Chung Wei and you wonder to yourself, how could he get this thing to look so good? And then maybe if it was a couple of decades ago, you'd realize, oh, okay, so he has to do this in the initial wash to get it to look right. So I have to do it as well. Now you can go a step beyond that and you actually have access to a video of his doing that, which can get those insights going much faster. Okay, so that's a huge benefit. Let me give you another example. Right now I'm sort of transitioning. It's something I haven't talked about a lot here, but I'm moving in the direction of working on my, I already started working on my own manga comic, the Japanese style comic um, with a story and characters and everything. Something I'm not as used to doing. Now, um, I did a lot of, uh, kind of practice and studies to learn how other people create and especially looking at artists that, that I really uh, love their work. Now, one of the things I learned, I'm gonna show you a study I did right now. This is a character called Griffith from one of my favorite, all time favorite mangas, Berserk. This study didn't necessarily teach me about drawing accurately or the different techniques. What I did get is a lesson in patience and effort. I started learning and realizing as I was working on it, look at this huge amount of details, I started realizing just how much effort went into doing this drawing. So when I did my drawings, maybe I was really uh, quick about it and uh, maybe careless. I didn't take my time enough to flesh out the details and didn't have enough patience to, to really put in everything I wanted. So by doing this, by forcing myself to not just paint from my own mind and the way I'm used to, but rather to do the work like this artist of this manga, Kentaro Miura, who's awesome by the way, did it, it forced me to also go into that amount of detail. And now I know. So it's not necessarily a matter of skill um, that's the reason for why I'm not as happy with some of my own works. It's a matter of just patience and taking your time. And that's a real humble pie to take because, you know, all this time, it's easy to blame the skill level and say, oh, I'm just not good enough, blah, blah, blah. But then when you realize the reason you didn't get the results you want was actually your responsibility and something that's fully within your control, that's a tough pill to swallow because you understand you are responsible for it. But it's also an important one to swallow because now, now you know you can do better just by pure patience. And I can actually connect this to uh, my students and my painting lessons that I do like one-on-one. -on -one. one of the major things that I see is people not getting the results they want because they're just in a hurry, too much in a hurry. It can stem from fear, it can stem from insecurity, it can stem from lack of patience. People are in a hurry. They don't take their time with their washes, with their stages, with their shapes, getting the shapes to look right, mixing the right value on the palette. A lot of it is just, just comes down to patience. And if you're impatient, you're hurting your results. And maybe your approach and your style is spontaneous, quick, a la prima. I'm fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. But I want that to come from a place of knowing yourself, not from a place of that's the only way I know and have been trying so far. 
maybe you'll discover you really like the other path, the patience path, okay? So I recommend, you know, doing things out of awareness and not out of just sheer habit. Now let's move on to ad uh, addressing the question. Is it cheating? Is it wrong? Is it not okay to copy masters? Well, <laughs> no. The answer to all of these is no. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly acceptable. It's perfectly okay. Here's where I maybe draw the line. If you claim the work to be your own, if you pretend like you made up the subject and the, and the painting and the composition, that I don't think is okay. And I think you should credit the original uh, paint. You don't even have to credit them necessarily. You can just paint and say, hey, this is a study uh, of a painting I love. I'm fine with that. It's better if you can say a painting by and then give the person's name because then people can actually compare them, can look, can, and you give the artist credit. If it's an artist that's long dead, then okay, they don't need the credit, but whatever. Um, I do think that's not the right move if you claim it to be your own. But as long as you're open about it, like do whatever you want, you know? There's this talk and it's not really, I'm not sure how many of my audiences are aware of this, but there's this talk in the illustration and comic book community about tracing. And if tracing is okay, and some people are really against tracing, meaning putting paper on paper and copying exactly to the T, um, or digitally, which is more common these days, to trace digitally, to just put a picture on your computer and trace over it. Some people are fully against it and I'm actually okay with it. As long as you credit the original creator, I'm actually perfectly fine with it. And you can trace in a way that isn't fully copying because you can change all sorts of things. So there's this hot debate and a lot of people are 100% against tracing. And I'm, I think tracing is cool. I think uh, copying, you know, I do tracing. I traced the statue that I painted a while ago and I was fully open about it. I traced it because I just wanted to get to the painting stage. But I credit back to all the pictures I use, all the things, the resources I use uh, to trace. So that's okay with me. Now, sometimes, and I'm going to give you even a better example. Um, when In my teenage <laughs> days, not that I'm that old, but what I used to do, I really wanted to practice inking like the Japanese artists do with this kind of a nib pen. This, this you know wooden thing that you stick a nib into and then you dip it into ink and you actually paint like that. I really wanted to practice this skill, but I didn't want to go through the process of drawing the whole thing. So I would trace, I would trace the character I wanted to ink, and then I would ink on it. Same goes for painting. If you just want to paint whatever it is you want to paint, you don't care about the drawing, you don't, you're not interested in drawing, you don't want to draw. What you want to do is paint, go for it, trace, I'm perfectly fine with that, you know, give due credit, don't copy what you see to the T and then claim it your own, if, if you know, just give the proper credit to the creator, to the original photo, to the original artist, I'm perfectly fine with that. So, to conclude real quick, Master Studies is a practice that's been done for, I don't know how long, but very long, it's very common in a multitude of fields, it's perfectly fine, it's a great tool for learning, and it's also a great tool for um, maybe giving the proper credit to artists of older ages because you bring their work back to life and you kind of give them your, you pay them your respect. Um, now I will say this, there are a couple of ways, I wanted to touch upon it, but there are a couple of goals for master studies. For me, it's mainly to learn about the technique and get into the mindset of the artist. But another goal can be to copy what they do to the T and really master the technique. That's a very common thing in art school, I guess, uh, in the more traditional art schools and, and ateliers. They really, they give you a, a, create, um, a painting or a sketch or whatever, and you have to copy it in as many details as possible. That's a great tool as well if you want to, my hair is terrible today, by the way. That's a great tool if you just, if you want to work on the technique purely. For me, I want to get out from it the basics, the, um, the composition, the basic technique used, but not necessarily, you know, copying exactly what I see. I think you can learn a lot uh, in the beginning of the drawing or painting process or from very superficially doing it. Um, and at some point it just gets less efficient if you're trying to copy each and every line. The lesson you already learned, I think the main thing to learn, you can move on to the next um, creation. That's just me, however. So these are my opinions, but I am curious to hear yours. So let me know in the comment down below. Do you do master studies? Do you copy other people's art? Do you trace? And what your thoughts are 
on this. I really hope you enjoyed this one and if you have please consider giving it a like, subscribing, I have tons of videos like this one talking and also tutorials and also reviews of other artists and, and beautiful paintings by artists that I appreciate. And yeah, this is it. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.